Kane is in the building. <laughs> What's going on guys, Swag here, and I'm bringing you a multiplayer game from a new game I purchased it's called Spec Ops The Line, and uh, I ended up getting, I think, 17 kills in this game, went in on a uh, 10 kill streak in the very beginning of the game, well, sort of the beginning, I mean, the uh, first uh, 15 or so kills on the game total, it's, uh, this game's pretty slow paced, but uh, if you get the right people in it, it can be fast paced. So this one was faster than most. It's still slow though. It's an 11 minute long game. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, talk about the campaign. The campaign is probably one of the best campaigns I've played in a first person shooter. It took about, I'd say, five or six hours to beat. But it said I played for three hours and 45 minutes. But. 6 o'clock until about 12 or 1 in the morning is definitely not 3 hours and 41 minutes. So I'm not really sure how long it takes to beat the campaign exactly, but it's it's not very long but fun. And it's got multiple reasons to replay it because you can get multiple achievements for uh, choosing different options. Like you can choose to kill somebody or not. It's that kind of game. It has stuff like that in it. So uh, yeah, that's the campaign. Uh, what it's about is a group of guys uh, are on a mission to investigate this city that is overrun by rogue U.S. soldiers. But they don't know that until they get there. They think it's just an abandoned city. They're searching for uh, survivors and everything. Uh, this tornado or something. I'm not even sure how the city got torn up, but it doesn't really say. So that's the uh, little backdrop campaign. I'm not going to spoil that too much for you. But uh, yeah, this game is really fun. It's, it's kind of like Gears of War. If you've played Gears of War 3, it's really fun. The multiplayer is very similar to that, except not quite as fast, of course. But it's got the same handling, you the same maneuvers, buttons, slide into cover, sprint, all the buttons are the same. Except some chainsaw, of course. Also, I guess you could compare it to uh, Army of Two. Army of Two, the 40th day, both of those. You know, it's humans, it's not monsters and humans so alright moving along let's talk about Etzjaws versus Minnesota Burns alright so about a month ago Etzjaws tweeted out at Minnesota Burns I did Minnesota Burns or Yalsh it, it wanted them to I bet the PR person for Yalsh will be paid in Twitter shoutouts and a custom controller from iController's so Minnesota Burns replied back and said, "If I had to guess, Etzjaws is a goofy-looking kid with a six-figure income that thinks he is better than everyone else." I don't think Etzjaws really meant he was better than Yash. I think he meant that he's partnering with a company that's better than Yash, Machinima, which of course is the best most well-paying gaming company you can be partnered with which I mean it is that's true so and you know Yalsh has started several months ago doesn't have a whole lot of income going flow through there so I mean what he said I mean it's true in the sense not in the sense of been paying with Twitter shoutouts they don't get a lot of money so he shouldn't have said it though I mean but now Estraza's channel is basically just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds and thousands of trolls disliking, leaving nasty comments. You go on his channel right now, in his past like five, six, seven videos are all at least 70%, all the way down to like 47% disliked. It's pretty bad. So, I think Minnesota Burns handled this a little too roughly. I mean, Etzjaz, he helped build the gaming community to where it is now. Call of Duty. Started back in Modern Warfare 2. And now he has... I don't know, he's been losing subs. I don't know, he's, he got about 850,000 subs, 900,000, somewhere around there. 
He's been losing, so I don't know how many he has now. But yeah, it's Charles. I mean, he helped build us to where we are now. You know, where we are on the home page and everything. Minnesota Burns hadn't done shit. I was just troll people. So I mean, I'm a fan of Minnesota Burns, but when you have that many people that you can send to troll someone's channel, I really don't think you need to. Like, there's a certain point you just when you get so big that you just don't need to hate on other people because it destroys their channels. I mean, he asked y'all to two years to get his channel where it is, and he might never recover now. Thanks to Minnesota Burns. So, that's my opinion on the whole situation. Don't leave nasty tweets at smaller YouTubers if you're a big one. And other big YouTubers, don't send troll armies to kill the other YouTuber. So, I'm not going to make you guys watch this full 11 minute gameplay, so I'm going to wrap it up right here. Hope you enjoy. Please leave a like. Comment below and subscribe for more swag out.